service the lord bless you thank you for coming um an extended warm welcome goes to our internet audience we are the apostolic faith church here in peckham we are at number 95 fenham road um, we've just started with the choir and orchestra um prelude you are more than welcome if you wish to come we'll be happy and glad to have you here if not please continue watching and the lord will bless you we'll continue our service um singing together our first song is CGS number 10. C
song is CGS 380. song is CGS 505. <laughs>
we'll sing on um, CGS 296. <laughs> Our song before prayer will be um, the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. And we're going to sing that song. For those of you that can stand, we'll sing it all standing. And after which we shall be led in prayer. We'll just take verse one and the chorus, but we'll take the chorus twice.
Our Bible reading for this morning is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. We are reading from verse 1 to 13. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, and said, This man shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Amen. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for and house for. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Five. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the gods. Six. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the war assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Seven. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Eight, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Nine, eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with the, his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Ten, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. 11. And thus shall ye eat it, with your lions guarded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Yeah. 13 and last. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, yeah. I will pass over you. Amen. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt.
I'm in love with the Savior hand. He's in love with me. Easy with me from day to day. What a friend is he. Watches over me while I sleep. Hears me when I pray. And now I'm happy as I can be. And I can say, Somebody loves me. Answers my prayers. I love somebody. I know he cares. Somebody tells me not to repine. That somebody is Jesus, and I know he's mine. You'll be happy if you will let Jesus have his way. He has walked for us all to do every passing day. Feed the hungry and cheer the sad for the sinners pray. You have the joy that you've never had when you can say Somebody loves me, answers my prayers. I love somebody. I know he cares. Somebody tells me not to repine. That somebody is Jesus, and I know he's mine. Somebody loves me, answers my prayers. I love somebody, I know he cares. Somebody tells me not to repine. That somebody is Jesus and I know he's mine. Then at last when our walk is done, he will call us home. To a mansion he is prepared, never more to roam. We sit down by the riverside, cares all pass away. And we'll be never pay the pain to bear, what a happy day. Somebody loves me, answers my prayers. I love somebody, I know he cares. Somebody who tells me not to repine. That somebody is Jesus and I know he's mine. That somebody is Jesus. Jesus hand, I know he's mine. That somebody is Jesus hand, I know. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And almost every, almost, and almost all things are by the Lord paid with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Victory through the blood. Uh, we thank God for a place like this where we hear the truth all the time. And may God help us to take advantage of the truth so that 
we can be free indeed. Amen. Jesus is the only one. And that victory we can obtain through his blood. Amen. Shedding of blood is uh, very important in the worship of God. And uh, from the beginning of time, this has been the case. When God made man, everything was perfect. And uh, our great, great, great uh, parents, Adam and Eve, they were very happy. Initially, we were told that God used to visit them and they will have a good time. But what a sad story. After they have done what God said they should not do. But thank God for the blood. Amen. God was not happy because they have disobeyed. And to show that uh, blood is very important. God had to kill some animals. Uh, we were told they were they would try to hide. Where can we hide from God? No. We can hide from our friends. Uh, children they do hide and seek something like that. They try to make themselves happy and then. When he or she, when they get themselves, then they laugh. But God sees us everywhere, every time. Whether we are in the uh, dark place or where there is light, whether we are far away or near, God is there. God was not happy and God had to kill animals for them. We can uh, also make reference to a number of people who have made use of the blood. Long ago, Abel was uh, one of them. He did what God wanted him to do. He himself and uh, Cain, the brother, they knew that they needed to appease God. They needed peace in their heart. They needed to be free. They needed uh, God to be closer to them. That was why both of them sought God. But thank God, Abel, not that uh, Cain did not know, but Abel did what was right. And uh, he made use of the blood, and God accepted his offering. May God accept our own offering too. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, it says the, the righteous, the father will not be a blame for the sin of the, of the son, neither will the son be killed for the sin of the father. So the wickedness of the wicked and the righteousness of the righteous. They are just two parallels. They, they, they don't meet. Two parallel lines, they don't meet. It is true that our parents, when they pray for us, God will answer their prayer. Yes. And I still remember one of our mothers in the Lord, she's still alive. She likens salvation to an umbrella. And she says that, uh, when that person dies, if I can, I'm quoting her correctly, the, the umbrella is gone. So that boy or girl needs his or her own umbrella. That umbrella is Jesus through his blood. So everybody needs that umbrella. In uh, uh, Africa, when the sun is very hot, he used an umbrella to uh, give you some shade. 
If you do that in this country, uh, when it is sun, when the sun is hot, they may be laughing at you. Yes. But Jesus is our umbrella. Yes. We need to make use of that blood so that the umbrella will work for us. And the, that blood, that all the blood that was shed that time is pointing to the blood of Jesus. But we want to note something that uh, the children of Israel, they were given instruction what to do. We have learned lessons about how God uh, dealt with the Egyptians because they did not uh, leave them in time. But our God is so merciful and patient. If we, we need to pray that God will give us just uh, an infinitesimally small degree of his mercy and patience, then our life will be sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, personally, I, I've, I have a lot of burden. And uh, sometimes I do the weeping alone. Because when I remember my children, how we started, I remember I will touch the, the womb of the, the mother. Uh, my wife, who is now late, I will touch her womb when the child is there. I will be praying, consecrating the child, and any problem is prayer. And prayer is prayed before the child comes out. And when the child comes out, it is prayer. And uh, for me, a number of times, uh, God has planned it that way, that uh, my, my own thorn, the thorn in my flesh, one of them, I will say, because I don't know which other ones God will send before he takes me away, is that uh, this problem of a childbirth, in fact, uh, the parents of my late wife, they had to give her advice. As if, uh, if before you ever think of going, uh, having a child again, do this, do that. But uh, as a woman of God herself, God spoke to her that she needed to ask counsel from him. The parents are right, but she needed to ask from God. Right. Yes, what do I want to bring out? The burden. You will, what as we human beings, I know what I have passed through before I come to the gospel. How Satan has tormented me. And I am praying that God will help my children and all our children Amen. that they will not go to that extent. But you know, as I said, that umbrella which we can get through Jesus, the uh, prayer or prayers of our parents, they are not enough. That person, that boy, that girl must pray himself. She must pray herself. So, and each time, God always assures me that he is going to do it. Amen. But you know, when you see things, uh, you have a saw, it is still there. You clean it yesterday, you put something to cover it, and today it's still paining you. It's not going to be there forever, but you're still feeling the pain. May God help us. Amen. That blood is very important. And he said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. We can remember what God has done for us through that blood. That's why we can say to friends or colleagues at work that our God is powerful. Yes. When you are passing through problems and you are still laughing, they say, are you all right? <laughs> of course I am all right. It's not a laughing matter. Even some people, too, who we may be in the same faith together, depends on uh, 
how we dip ourselves in that blood spiritually. Well, when there is problem, we want it to be solved now, now. That's you, that's me. But for some reason, God may want the problem to be there for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Some people, their own is for a lifetime. But through this blood of Jesus, Amen. we can overcome. Amen. So we need to get right with God. As sinners, because we are in enmity with God. And somewhere it says, God is angry with the sinner every day. It doesn't matter who is your father, who is your mother. When you are a sinner, you are a sinner. But thank God, God wants to forgive you. Amen. Just as he has said, in, uh, when, you know, when Solomon was doing the uh, dedication, and in two places, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 36, there is a clause there. It says, For no, there is no man that sinneth not. It means it's you or myself. We can commit sin. But Jesus doesn't want us to die like that. No. He came to shed his blood for you and for me. Yes. Jesus loves us. That's why. I still remember that thing we met here. He said that, uh, well, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, he didn't say when we will become uh, saints. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that blood is very important. We must make use of that blood. Romans chapter 3. God help us to make use of that blood. Amen. Romans chapter 3, I'm reading verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith and his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So the blood of Jesus is very important. There is no sin that he cannot forgive. No. When the children of Israel, when they sinned in the wilderness, they confessed their sins. They went to Moses and told him that we have sinned. All the sinner needs to do is to acknowledge his or her sins and to repent. See, this is a, a, a song that we continue to sing. To repent is to be truly sorry for sin and to resolve sincerely, not to commit sin again, that I will continue to do right. I will please God by your grace because he has the grace to give us to please him. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Yeah. And we have peace of God in our heart. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. As in that song that we sang. What of uh, if we truly mean to come out of sin, we pray and Jesus will come into our heart. He will let us know that our sins have been pardoned. But he doesn't want us to stay like that. We must make progress. And uh, if we are doubting in any way about sin, uh, forgiveness of sin, we all have faith. We may think that some people don't have faith. It's just that we are not using it the way we should. When you pass through the bridge, whether you are in a car, on a bus, or you are walking, you have some faith that you will not drop in the river. Otherwise, you wouldn't be walking. You'd probably pass through somewhere else. But a number of times, we have to cross the bridge anyway. The blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But if we don't make progress, 
that is negative acceleration, will be going back. God wants us to progress through the blood. Yes. The blood of Jesus. Amen. A step further, we, we have victory. We swim in the blood by faith. When we read the word of God and we pray and we listen to God, yes, we are applying the blood and victory will come. Victory through the blood of Jesus. John chapter 1. Victory through the blood. John chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 11. John chapter 1, 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, yes. even to them that believe on his name. The name of Jesus is powerful. Yes. Verse 13. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. To be born of God, we must tell him all our sins. And we must determine that we want to live for him. You no, know, when you go into a contract, you, you, have, uh, you must have some things to agree. If uh, somebody wants to do some plumbing work or heating work or any type of contract, they must have a kind of agreement. You are paying me X pound. I will finish in so so day. And uh, if you don't finish that time, then uh, the person who gave you the job will not be happy. Maybe there is a, a type of money that is going is withheld with the, your client, and uh, when the job is done, there is a problem. Then there will be a kind of a dialogue before you can get the rest of the money. The agreement we make with God is more important than that. We must ask for grace so that we will keep our own side of the contract. And when we keep our own side of the contract, God is wonderful. He will surely keep his own. We don't want to be like a stagnant pool. Stagnant pool stinks. And this blood, the blood of Jesus is an all-purpose remedy. Yes. I will pass over you. Amen. How many times have we prayed? You know, we may not even have time to do a long prayer. You say, cover me with your blood. Amen. You know, that prayer is important. It works. Yes. Cover me with your blood. We are not joking when we say that. We mean that he should cover us. Yes. And he does cover us. Yes. Because he has the power to do so. Yes. When an announcement is made about services during the week and we have the time, what do I mean by we have the time? It doesn't mean that we have to choose. Maybe we are tied up at work or for something else that God understands. Well, otherwise, we know that our life is just in the blood. And in order to swim in the blood, we must attend the meetings. We must listen to sermons, listen to testimonies. We must pray and commune with our maker. When we listen to the prayer of a brother or sister, we are strengthened to pray more. No wonder it says that not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, 
But he said, we should eat so much the more because the day is drawing near. It's drawing near. God help us. Amen. And uh, what other things can we say about this blood? Sometimes we are hard up. And the, the psalmist in uh, uh, Psalm 56, verse 3, he says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Yes, amen. I remember a brother, he's now in glory, he was testifying that uh, during the night, it's in Nigeria, they, they were sleeping in bed and they saw a snake on the wall. See? He just prayed and God helped them. Amen. So God is great. There is no problem greater than him. When we are driving, we apply the blood. Amen. When we are in the kitchen, we apply the blood. Amen. When you are taking an exam, apply the blood. Amen. It will work for you. Amen. Yes. The blood works. Yes. And it will continue to work. We want to meditate, as he said to Joshua. Say this, the word, he said he should meditate in that word. That uh, should not depart from him. All the laws that Moses, as uh, the servant of God, has said, he should not depart from it. He said by doing it, by meditating and reading it, by doing it, Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Amen. That's how we can apply the blood. The blood will continue to avail for us. Amen. Beware of feeding your soul with just any stuff. I don't know why some people take delight in just sending anything. They send anything about. They talk about this... Uh, this prophet, somebody who died and went to heaven, and uh, everything we need to know is in this Bible. Yes. Thank God, our leader uh, uh, used to say that he doesn't he doesn't see a vision, but as God leads him. So it's not bad to see a vision if it is not against the Bible. But uh, if we are determined to go to heaven. You know, if they put a child of uh, 10 on this pulpit, and he or she reads the leaflet for the children to us, and we go and pray, Jesus will save souls. He will sanctify. He will baptize with the Holy Ghost. Jesus will heal. You know, some people have a problem it appears they are worshiping the preacher, the number of people in the church. That is, that is not going to take us to heaven. You know, some people were following Jesus and they were not blessed. So it is good to worship in a place where there are thousands. But if we are 10 and we truly mean business, Jesus will bless us. Yeah. The little that we are taught in this church, if we tell God to give us the grace to do it, you know, if for any reason we are not privileged to read any other thing or to look at any other, uh, any, any of, to have any privilege of listening to any other thing other than what we are taught, and we pray for grace to do it, the gate of heaven will be open. But if we read everything here and there, we listen to them, we look at the, uh, the screen, and we don't pray, and we are not free from sin, Jesus doesn't know you, doesn't know me. Mm -hmm. If that is our life, may God bless us. Amen. The blood is very powerful. Yes. Hebrews chapter 9. Victory through the blood. Lord, please give us victory. Amen. We need victory through the blood of Jesus. Amen. He is able to give us victory. Amen. He has never lost a battle. 
I'm reading from verse 4. Which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that bordered and the tables of the covenant. The covenant that God made with Israel. You no, know, as I said, all those things they were just uh, pointing to something, something greater. And that is Jesus Himself. We have Him who is our greatest high priest. Yes. He has shed His blood for us, and that blood will continue to avail for us. Amen. We want to apply it the right way. Yes. Jesus, the all in all. Apply your blood so that we can be free. Whatever is uh, making us to be bound, God, deliver us. Amen. Verse 12, I skip to verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen. See how great a privilege we have. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Thank God for this man of God, uh, Paul the Apostle, that God used to give us this word. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Amen. Search your heart. And God wants me to search my heart too. Because the word of God is a two-edged sword. We thank God for this church. God doesn't spare anybody. From head to toe. If you have a, a rotten conscience, it doesn't matter what title I give myself. If my heart is rotten, God does not take, it, it doesn't take cognizance of that. No. On this holy pulpit, we have been given a sledgehammer to hit against sin. Irrespective of in the life of anybody, he, that sin is. No sin will enter heaven. That's why Jesus shed his blood. Yes. If your heart is rotten, I don't know, there's a, an adage in my place, which I try to say in English. If the blacksmith, if he's uh, hitting the, uh, the, uh, the iron on one spot, there must be a reason. If your heart is rotten and you are attending this church and you are covered, doing cover up, if your heart is rotten, the blood of Jesus can wash it. Yes. He wants to wash it this morning. Yes. If your heart is rotten, you will not make heaven. If your heart is rotten, let's come and tell Jesus. Remove rottenness in my heart. The altar is the place.
Father, we come before you. We ask you to wash us in your precious blood. We ask you to apply your blood to our hearts. Lord, all the rottenness, all the sins, all the iniquities in our hearts, Lord, wash it away. Come down this morning, oh Lord. Forgive us. Cleanse us. Make us whole. Change our lives. Change our destiny. We don't want to go to hell. We want to be with you in heaven, Lord. Come down this morning and wash us in your precious blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.